In this episode of Lifespan News, the World Health Organization launches an aging portal. Brianna Deutsch wants you to contact lawmakers about aging. The extracellular matrix is key to heart health. C60 does not improve lifespan or health span. And Dr. Matt Caberlin on the National University of Singapore Longevity Webinar. Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life Extend Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. And while you're here, check out X10's new channel trailer. For our first story, the World Health Organization recently launched a new aging portal. This portal brings together in one place data on global indicators for monitoring the health and well-being of people aged 60 and over. The data is disaggregated by age, sex, and country so users can look at trends across different groups. There's also visualizations of the data, including maps. The WHO expects that by the end of 2020, users of the portal will be able to create country profiles as background for conducting situational analysis and initiating policy dialogues with stakeholders. Data will be updated as and when new estimates or information become available. The WHO aims to strengthen the visibility of issues relating to the health and well-being of older people and should ultimately help inform and drive action for national policies and plans to support healthy aging. Following up on a story from last week's episode, Brana Deutsch wants you to contact lawmakers about aging. In last week's episode, we talked about the book Finding the Fountain by Brana Deutsch. The book advocates for aging research and comes from the perspective of a political communicator. Recently, Lifespan.io interviewed Brianna. Brianna shared her story with us as a longevity supporter and discussed some of the roadblocks that stand between now and a future where rejuvenation exists. Brianna also believes there's a place for a grassroots longevity movement that can put pressure on policymakers and bring the cause of healthy longevity research to their attention. You'll find links to both Brianna's full interview and our review of her book in the description below. Moving on, the extracellular matrix is key to heart health. New research published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences highlighted differences between the heart extracellular matrix of healthy people and people in end-stage heart failure. The extracellular matrix, or ECM, is a scaffolding on which our tissue grows. Presently, there are many things we don't know about the heart ECM specifically. In this new research, the scientists took heart ECM samples from two different donor groups and decellularized them. That is, they removed heart tissue and left only the ECM. The first group were younger patients who died of causes unrelated to the heart, whereas the second group were much older patients who suffered from end-stage heart failure. Afterwards, the researchers cultured primitive cardiac cells on the ECM of both groups and on 2D cell culture plastic. Cells cultured on the ECMs exhibited greater heart-specific behaviors than did cells cultured on 2D cell culture plastic. Moreover, cells cultured on healthy ECM had more cardioprotective factors than those cultured on pathological ECM. Cells grown on pathological ECM expressed more fibrotic factors and had an increase in compounds associated with damage response. This study has shown once more that 3D cell culture is superior to 2D culture. It also provides some insights on the limitations of using ECM from unhealthy donors for cardiac regeneration. However, the researchers attributed this primarily to end-stage heart failure and not to age. So, as many of our stories end right now in 2020, further studies will be needed to assess the role of tissue aging and differences observed between the two donor groups. For our next story, a new study unfortunately shows that C60 does not improve lifespan or health span. C60 buckyballs came to the attention of the longevity community several years ago when a study with a small cohort of rats found that C60 dissolved in olive oil extended their lifespan. 
This led to some people in the longevity community purchasing and using C60 supplements despite a lack of safety and efficacy data and even a study showing harmful effects in mouse embryos. A team led by researchers at i Therapeutics tested C60 that they got from several online sources. The researchers found that not only did the C60 concentration not match the label, but also the supplements contained impurities. The researchers also created pristine C60 in their lab to test its effect. The researchers found that C60 has a half-life of about two days of stored in light. Even worse, when C60 is dissolved in olive oil, which is how many people use C60 apparently, C60 can break down into compounds that were toxic to mice. Finally, C60 dissolved in olive oil or extra virgin olive oil didn't improve the lifespan or health span of mice. If you want to learn more about C60 in this study, you should also check out a recent episode of the Shiki Science Show hosted by our friend Eleanor Shiki. We highly recommend subscribing to her channel. You'll find links in the description below. For our final story, the National University of Singapore has recently launched a series of webinars focused on the topic of healthy longevity. The first webinar episode was hosted by Professor Brian Kennedy, former head of the Buck Institute for Aging Research in Novato, California, and currently distinguished professor at the National University of Singapore. The first webinar focused on the topic of targeting aging as a means to prevent or delay the insurgence of multiple age-related conditions. This webinar features Dr. Matt Caberlin as a guest speaker, who discusses this approach more in detail and the benefits that it may bring. Dr. Caberlin is also known for being the co-director of the Dog Aging Project, an initiative to study aging in dogs and find interventions to slow aging down both in pets and humans. Hopefully you can check this webinar out, there'll be a link in the description below. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few free, quick, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, then please make sure that you like this video Share this video on your social media. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all notifications. Yes, these things are really simple. And yes, they can really help us solve the human aging problem and bring more awareness to this science. So yes, we will continue to mention this in every video. We really appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you in the next video at least as healthy as you are now.